decides to spend the 4th of July in England. Huh. I'm Chris Wall with the rest of the vlog who always tells it like it is. Four years ago, the entire media family went to Portugal, where my oldest brother and his family live now. The timing was the idea of my eccentric Uncle Ed, who wanted to have a 4th of July picnic in Portugal. Even though I doubt the country had anything to do with American independence, unless Spain browbeat them into sending ships our way for the cause. Now the WWE is having the first PLE since SummerSlam 92 in London, three days before the 4th of July. Yeah, I don't think it's as big a celebration there. I think they commemorate us giving the finger to George III by starting the Wimbledon tournament around that time, and that's it. It takes a lot of balls to celebrate independence from a country in said country. There will be fireworks, if not outside the O2 arena, then definitely inside. Two wicked ladder matches for guaranteed title matches, three actual title matches, and two other grudge matches. One brutal, the other... Uh, I doubt King Charles III will be getting an up yours this time. He got that when NXT UK ended. Here are my predictions for Money in the Bank 2023. Let's start with the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes versus the Judgment Day's Dominic Mysterio. Aww, two sons of Hall of Famers duking it out just because they don't like each other. Kind of gets you right here, doesn't it? Actually, it's more right here. Credit where it's due, though. Dom is getting so much heat, he's bound to be in line for a title match sometime soon. Not that Cody's not getting a lot of cheers 15 months after he abandoned his child, despite being screwed out of title matches. He'll get his comeuppance soon. Just not tonight. Because if Ray Ripley doesn't get to him, Brock Lesnar will. I know I'm setting myself up for a half point here, but winner by disqualification, Cody Rhodes. Women's tag titles. Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler defend against Raquel Gonzalez and Liv Morgan. I really hate to say this, but Rack Rod seems to be destined to be close to greatness only to have it snatched from her constantly. I mean, she was part of the NXT Women's Tag Titles twice. For a total of three days. Oh, she had the WWE version twice as well for less than two months total. Plus, even though Morgan is back by her side, they're facing two former MMA fighters who more or less killed Ilsa Dawn and Alba Fire's main roster careers before they even started. Show that muscular back all you can, Raquel. You're going to be on it in pain before the night's out. Winners and still champs, Rousey and Baszler. Intercontinental Championship, Gunther versus Matt Riddle. Say what you will about the original bro. Despite all the weed he appears to smoke, he's got balls of solid adamantium. He's not afraid to go up to the biggest guy in the yard and slap his face, and even go after his sidekicks to make a point. The ring general, however, doesn't have that name for in intimidation. Riddle may be fast on his bare feet, but Gunther seems to go into every match with a plan A, a plan B, all the way to a plan Z, and even beyond. And if Ludwig Kaiser and order returning Giovanni Vinci intervene, uh, discreetly of course, not even Riddle's Deadpool-like unpredictability can net him the third title en route to a Grand Slam. Gunther is going to break Honky Tonk Man's record, mark my word. Winner and still champion, Gunther. Women's ladder match. Winner gets a WWE or World Women's title match within the next year. Normally this ladder match is made for superstars who need a bit of a push in their career. And that makes me wonder why Bailey or Becky Lynch are in it up. Honestly, I thought Shotzi would be in Bailey's place after last night, but... Nope. 
But the real issue here is that four of the six women are allies with one of the other four. Bailey and Io Sky and Zoe Stark and Trish Stratus. Will these alliances hold with a shot of the gold on the line? Doubtful for what's left of damage control, though I can see Stark aiding Stratus all the way. And Selena Vega, uh, she had her shot at glory in her home country two months ago and she blew it. I don't see Trish A winning or B allowing Stark to win, so sadly that leaves the man. Not that I don't want her as champ again, but can she really be something without a title these days? Oh well. Winner is Becky Lynch, though I have Zelina Vega as a secondary for a half point if she wins. Men's ladder match. Winner gets, well, if last year's an indication, a shot at any men's title within the next year. And basically, Austin Theory knew he couldn't beat Roman Reigns even if the only one was beaten down, so I guess the higher ups allowed him to take the U.S. title instead. But I don't see any of the seven men in this year's battle stooping that low. They all want a World Heavyweight or WWE Universal title match, refuse to call it undisputed. And all could use the boost in their careers too, but Butch? He belongs staying with the Brawling Brutes buddies. Santos Escobar? He seems fine being Rey Mysterio's LWO running buddy. Shinsuke Nakamura? Would love to see it, but I don't know. Ricochet? Yikes, no. And though Logan Paul is a monkey wrench in the works, as I said before, the others will hold him back, which leaves LA Knight and Damien Priest. The thought of Priest cashing in right after the World Heavyweight, Champ Heavyweight Championship match, no matter who wins, is appealing to me. He'd probably lose, but sure, why not? But the artist temporarily known as Max Dupree has needed a big boost ever since that ridiculous match against Bray Wyatt so long ago, so I'm picking L.A. Knight, yeah! With Damian Priest as a secondary pick. The Bloodline Civil War, Jimmy and Jey Uso versus Roman Reigns and Solo Sokoa. Just as good as the main event, even though it's now been, been three months since Roman put his title on the line in front of TV cameras, Adam Pearce had better force him into a title defense at SummerSlam. In any case, despite losing last month, Roman and Solo have proven that they are still tight, even if the Usos sticking with brotherly blood over cousinly blood blew up the bloodline. It's only a matter of time before Solo joins his brothers, though, leaving Roman all alone on the so-called Island of Relevancy, with the doughy Paul Heyman as his man Friday. For now, though, Roman and Solo may not be tight as brothers, but thick as thieves is a more appropriate moniker. And it has been a while since Jimmy and Jay have been together with the cameras on, but the thing about twins is that they know each other so damn well that there's no such thing as ring rust between them. Now, this might be their first steps toward getting back Tag Team Gold, if the rumors about the Raw and SmackDown titles being ununified and changed in name soon are true. So Roman may very well have to go into SummerSlam alone. Winners of the Usos! Finally, World Heavyweight Championship match. Seth Friggin Rollins defends against Finn Balor. I have to admit that I feel for Balor. I mean, technically he was the first ever Universal Champion, except that he got injured in the fight and had to give it up the next day, but he's done pretty well for himself since. I mean, managed to trick Edge into thinking he was a team player with him, only to replace him at, as the Judgment Day leader, but, you know, six years, man, that's a long time to hold a grudge. But I guess Balor wants to do to Rollins what Rollins did to Finn. Hurt him, so, hurt him so much that he has to forfeit his shiny new title belt. And if Priest, Mysterio, and Ripley survived their ordeals, that'll really stack the odds against the visionary and revolutionary. Rollins, but Rollins hasn't been such a popular babyface in years. Sure, he's got a lot of heat as the Monday Night Messiah before and during the pandemic years, but... There's just something about the man that makes you want to keep singing his song. And he's plenty resilient, too. He took two coups de grace and still defended his title on NXT. 
and make Braun Breaker super piss in the process. I think he can handle this particular judgment day. Get ready to burn it down! Like it's 1666, London. Winner and still champ, Seth frickin' Rollins. Those are my picks. Remember, to count the fingers and toes you have before you set off fireworks, and make sure you end the night with the same amount. I'm Chris Wood with the Wrestling Vlog, who always tells it like it is. Pray for peace, and I'll see you.